I have the JS track program and I'm going to show you really quickly how to import a file and then analyze data from that video. So I'm just going to drag a uh, file that I happen to have in the video over here into this box or you can click select local file and you can find it on your computer. And then I get a little spinny thing that hopefully doesn't last forever. Um, but sometimes it does. Be patient. This happens to be, a f I think, a four second clip. So it, it, if it's too long, it's going to take just a long time to, to figure that all out. So it gives you this prompt. And I'm just going to call it my free fall video. And it usually selects all of these things just as you would want them to be. So I'm not even going to think about them too hard. Most things record at 30 frames per second. You could have a high-speed video camera that captures at 60 times a second or 120 times per second. The most video you have is something like 30 times a second. So I've selected that. I've named it. Not messed with anything else. I say create. And here is the video that I happen to share with you. And uh, I have a few different things that I can do, including change where these axes are. And I'm going to pick these axes to be lined up with where the ball happens to start. And actually, I want it to line up with where the ball starts to leave my hand. So you notice down here I have this slider that can make your physics professor go up and down. And I'm just going to slide it to where the motion actually really gets interesting. And I'm going to select the center of the ball as the kind of the start point for my whole data collection. So this doesn't really do anything important. It just gives me a point of reference. The other thing that I'm going to do is pick a point here that says Create Scale. And if I click that, sure, pink, but wouldn't it be better if it were blue something? I don't know. Pick a scale color. I say Create. And it says basically pick any two points that I know the measurement distance for. It so happens in this screen I have a meter stick. So if I click here, oops, click there, and I extend that to the end of the meter stick, and then I just say that's that is one meter. Or I think I can double click that and change it to something else. If you have a 12 inch ruler or one foot ruler, or there's something else in here you happen to know what its dimensions are, use that. So if I didn't have a meter stick here, I could have measured in real life the length of this or the height of this window and then program that in or put that scale in. It doesn't matter. It's just telling the screen how big objects happen to be. And it's going to scale all of your measurements to that particular um, background thing that you know the actual measurements of. If you didn't actually do that, it's just going to use something that's arbitrary, but it would still be scaled uh, proportional to the screen that you're using. Okay. Now, where this is at, there's stuff here. Great. Where this gets interesting is when I click, well, I can move these axes around. When I click and add a point to this, um, I don't know if I have to say create new track. Call this my track. I clicked on it. Sure. Ah, good. Um, I think when I over. Okay, I'm just talking to the computer screen. I saw it saying something here. When I hover. Okay, nothing helpful. Um, but I think the key here that I often get frustrated with is that I have to press the shift key. That's what I'm doing here. I press shift. Everything else goes away when I do that. If I press shift and then I click with the mouse or the trackpad, it adds a point. That's what this little diamond is here. And then it advances the screen or advances the video one frame. So that point has been added and then you see the ball is a little bit higher up in the air because that's the next frame of the video. So I press shift again. All the background goes away. I click with the shift 
with the shift in my left hand held down and then the mouse to my right hand. I click there again, I let go of things, and it leaves a little marker, another marker there. And if I keep doing this, shift click, shift click, shift click, you notice I'm doing the center of the ball. I could have chosen the bottom of the ball or the top of the ball, whatever. Um, as long as I'm consistent, I can just keep finding points. And I'm not being super careful here. There's some uncertainty. Let's center, shift click, shift click. And you see over here, I get all of these points that describe what's happening in time from 1.2 seconds to 1.5 something seconds. That's what each of these points represent in the timeline of the film, the film, video, the reel, whatever. And then this X is suggesting what's happening left to right, which there's not much going on of interest left to right for this ball that's been thrown straight up to the air. But for this Y dimension, it's showing that it's at 0.16 meters and then at 0.32 meters and then 0.46 meters and 0.60 meters, 0.72 meters, etc. You kind of get a sense for it's going upward, but less and less with each step, right? So it's recording all of those data. I really am interested in the time, and in this case, the Y dimension, the vertical dimension. Now, it will go on to say, hey, you can go ahead and copy all of this stuff. If I do a shift and select, and I do a control C or command C on the Mac, it's going to copy all those things, and I can put them into a spreadsheet. It also says, hey, open this spreadsheet for further calculations. And if I do that, it's going to open a whole other window. And it says, you can go ahead and copy your entire table from your track in here. But if you do that, you will just be, you can hear me clicking frantically, and it will tell me practically nothing, do nothing for me, and I'll just get mad at it. And then I look at the instructions where it says, this spreadsheet is intended to let you easily extract blah, 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 blah. And then it says, hey, go to file, make a copy, use Google Sheets, or file, download, Microsoft Excel. It's, this is telling me this is the, the original, and I can't actually use this original template. I have to download it myself. So what you can't see me doing here is I'm going up to the menu. Um, oops. Um, the menu here, I say make a copy. It says, well, how do you want to call this? I can call this Adams JS track calculations or free fall calculations. It's going to put it into my drive. I could also download it to my own computer. I say, OK. It says, here you go. And now this is my very own named free fall, cal free fall calculations. And now if I go here and I do a paste or control V or command V, all my data are going to go there. And then it's going to create for me a bunch of graphs. And if I go to these other tables, it will show me what those graphs are like. I will t tell you that the exposition is not very interesting because that's what's happening left and right. Not much is happening left and right. You see that these numbers are very, very close to the same as each other. But the Y stuff is going to be more interesting. I didn't collect much data here, so not much has happened. Another thing that you could do is create a whole new sheet and go ahead and paste new values into that. And I should have, actually, move these all down a little bit. And I can say these are time, and x position, and y position. And in fact, I really, I so much don't care about those x's. I'm going to take them out. I'm just going to move the y's over so they're nice and cuddly with the time. I'll highlight these. I'll then say 
insert a chart. And it will take it a second, <clears throat> but it will then say, oh yeah, you highlighted some data here of y and time, and it will graph those y positions and those times. And then instead of putting in points, it's putting kind of a smooth line here. I can tell it to do a collection of points so I can see what I actually collected. It says, yeah, that's what happened. And I could collect more of those. Remember, I didn't do very many yet. Um, I could watch it go all the way up and all the way back down and see how that compares to my bowling ball kind of data. Um, but the, the basics of all of this start with using the JS track or another video analysis collection, collector and uh, collecting these points and then using those points to then create data for time and these Y positions in particular. If you had another video, you might have more things happening left to right and you could use these X or left to right kinds of variables uh, or data. Um, but in my case, I was just looking at up and down time and the up and down data. And then I was able to record those using this piece of software-like stuff. And then I can export it into a spreadsheet, make a graph, and that tells me something. So this is my quick way of telling you how this is all working. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff you can do. I'm sure I've already bored you too much, so I'll leave it at that. And wish you well. Let me know if you've got questions.